I hereby introduce to you Mr. Michael Veazey. Hello there, amazing FBAs, and welcome to the show. This is a quick recap, really, on the year or reviewing. So one of the main things that I'm always emphasizing with the podcast is learn, do, review. So I'm going to practice what I preach and uh, look back at the year or indeed over the last several years, depending on how long you've been in business. What's coming up, by the way, is also an important thing to think about when you review what's coming up. It's normally best to see that as a prelude to changing your current action to get a different future if you like so looking back work with an eye to the future uh, one of the things that's coming up in the future of amazing fba is a new podcast 10k collective which is going to focus on the needs of those who've already got revenue i.e they're already making sales and, and hopefully most of the advanced sellers as well so we've got several podcasts already in the bag for that dealing with things as diverse as preparing your business to sell and selling to people you know, who buys it including private equity and such things how to get some massive loans to really boost your sales um, because it enables you to buy uh, stock. How to get lots of money back from Amazon if it owes you money in refunds. So look out for all of that stuff. We will be uh, putting URLs at the beginning of the show. Uh, so, you know, you'll get your links, uh, I should say, at the beginning of the show or at the end. So look out for that. And if you're in that position, you're particularly going to want to join us for that. So the year in review. Um, it's very tempting to turn this into a list of numbers and numbers are very important. But what I think you've got to do with numbers is to pull them together uh, into a picture. So ultimately, the numbers got to tell a story uh, rather than just being numbers that don't mean anything to you. So before we start with the numbers, let's start with some right brain whole picture kind of questions. The first question is, how are you feeling about your Amazon business, even if it hasn't got revenue yet? I mean, technically, I would say if you haven't got any revenue, you don't quite have a business yet, but you'll probably work on building one like you don't have a house. When you're building one, uh, you still got to spend money and time and effort in the building phase. So whether you have revenue or whether you're just building, how do you feel about it? And that's an important thing to check in with because as the entrepreneur, mostly a solopreneur, just you most of the time, or that you may have a, a business partner or investors and certainly you hopefully be growing a team pretty swiftly, but it does come down to you to drive it and you've got to have the motivation. So it's important to check in with yourself as part of checking with the business because in the beginning, there is no separation. It's like a, a, a mother with a baby when they, they're in the womb, you know, they're there is no separation to start with and then you know the entrepreneur gives sometimes painful birth to the business and the separation starts and uh, so the quality of your thinking and feeling about your business is really critical you've got to be honest with yourself about that if you're feeling a bit negative uh, a couple of things to think about that are not just immediately going to be shown in the figures are uh, skill sets that you've learned have you learned any skills that aren't immediately showing in the kpis and that's often I find it can take several years for skills to really show up in terms of, you know, significant changes in your own personal income. Uh, but they generally do show up. In my experience, I've learned skills even 10, 15 years ago that are beginning to show up in my um, Amazon business work and in the coaching work that I do for Amazing FBA and marketing work as well. So that includes, for example, sales skills, which came into their own for negotiation with the Chinese sellers, which I first learned in the sort of 2001 era when I was seeing some face-to-face uh, -face selling which at the time I hated but it really taught me to negotiate and I love that and that's something I will be doing a podcast about at some point soon and the other thing is online marketing uh, as a coach which I did back in 2007 um, did quite a lot of work on that didn't seem to pay off but there lo and behold amazing FBA has really enabled that to come to fruition so sometimes the time frame you put on things can make a big difference so I would always look at the soft skills as well as the hard numbers that you're getting out of a situation when you're reviewing it what mindset shifts can you identify i mean for me again that would be pretty simple that these days i trend i tend if i think something's going to work instead of researching it to the nth degree i try and get something out in the marketplace and get some feedback from the marketplace i try and make stuff and or have it made and put it out there whether that's a, a digital product like the plp course the private label process course which is now available or going to be available again from january for amazon sellers or um, physical products like the um, music stand lights that i sold for years on amazon so whichever it is uh, if i want to know whether a market is going to be any good i don't rely on just research i get something out there and try and sell it basically so that's a big mindset for me and that that took me 
until about the age of 40 to do so you don't have to wait that long if you're over 40 and you're still waiting okay it's never too late so those are some very valuable things that have come out of the last four years for me of amazon work and their amazing fba work which aren't actually things that uh, you can track on a spreadsheet very easily and you can over time see the upside for sure i mean financial upside i.e profit but uh, you can't necessarily do that immediately so having talked about numbers we ought to get into those so the basic key performance indicators you need to keep an eye on there's a, there's a few principles here that i think you need to follow first of all always close the loop so to improve your future actions you need to review the effects of past actions the classic time to do that for example is you look back through your profit and loss in january and you look back at Christmas and go, OK, I sold a lot. Did I make profit? <laughs> Which is really important because that's going to really affect your future actions. You know, whether you reorder a product, whether you renegotiate price, um, whether you change something about it to ensure that there is profit there. You've always got to know your financial numbers or you're driving blind. So when I say you've got to have the big picture view, you definitely got to have your numbers. You need to know things like the break even point for products you need to know whether a product's profitable or not at a certain price including the amazon ad spend or any other sort of marketing spend and it could be that if you look back at your business and you realize that it's a bit of a mess then welcome to the club then there's always uh, a lot of improvements that can be made but that could be one of the things you realize when you review your business is you don't know any of your numbers because your records are a mess in which case a new year's resolution for you is going to be to keep better records for future but for specific purposes i mean that's the other thing i would say don't know been a bunch of meaningless numbers make sure you know the numbers that contribute to meaningful top line numbers like you know what's the overall profit uh, or loss by product line what's the overall profit and loss of your business and uh, yeah knowing your product based kpis is really important sessions and conversions people are often very ignorant of that it's very easy to find i'll tell you how to do that in a minute but very easy to find out conversion rates and sessions easy to ignore as well so just the main thing is to make sure you know those and make sure you're really keeping an eye on your ad spend and your AdWords data as well. Your ad, say AdWords, I mean um, Amazon Ads data. So this is really, really critical because you can end up uh, spending a lot of money on that without realizing because Amazon makes it easy to do that. Guess why? It's their most profitable division. Their cloud-based computing division, whose name escapes me at the moment, is also pretty profitable. But within the retail business that most of us think of as Amazon.com, etc., then ads make them the most money so be very careful they are very uh, keen on you spending like crazy without thinking about it too much we need to go the opposite way so a few simple kpis or numbers to keep an eye on would be the following uh, first of all on seller central just keep uh, an eye on if you're doing fulfilled by merchant how is fulfilled by merchant measuring up to fulfilled by amazon so how is the cost and profit and loss side of it uh, how are the conversion rates how are the sessions so in other words is amazon giving you actual decent exposure for your fbm products there's not that common but some people do that so that's one thing you might want to look at the meat and potatoes of it is going to be the following three reports, which is business reports, Amazon ads, and profit loss. So business reports first. Uh, the, you can find this very simply on Seller Central by going to business, so reports, business reports, buy ASIN, detail page sales, and traffic by parent item. And by the way, if you want the show notes, go to amazingfba.com forward slash 300. That's quite the number we've hit, hit now. Amazingfba.com forward slash 300. And you can see this stuff broken down in a little list. So the two things you want to know, I think, are sessions, like how many people have visited your page in a given period. And at this stage of the year, try and take a nice long period. Unit session percentage, uh, the conversion rate, in other words. Very important to know those two numbers. Download your data as well, um, because those that data disappears after 18 months. And after you've been in business for two, three years, and you've got a product that's been around for that, that long or longer, you'll want to be able to see long-term trends. Basically, how well is your product converting? And could you experiment with pictures, price, text, etc., to to improve this? If you have been around for a while, how does that compare to last year? Is the market shifting? And how do you need to respond to that? Amazon ads data. I would check this initially on the screen. So you go to advertising all campaigns and then dig into each campaign before you use the search term report. It's a lot easier to make sense of. Check which campaigns have resulted in significant spend and of that spend, which has resulted in sales. You need to look product by product rather than just by the campaigns, because it may be that a campaign in and of itself is not profitable. But if it has helped you or get organic rankings for keywords, then that is still valuable and the main the main thing you need to put into place is the advertising to sales ratio you need to make sure you measure that so that's basically all of the ad spend on a product line 
divided by all the, the revenue for the same period of time, which is important to get right, on that product line. And if it's over 10%, you're going to normally struggle to make sense of any kind of profit <laughs> over 10%. So keep your ad advertising to sales ratio below 10%, basically. That's normally a rule of thumb, depends on your profit margins. If there are opportunities in your AdWords data, that's good to follow up on. So are there opportunities for keywords with good search volume? So under the impressions column, and what keywords should you be targeting if they're making good you know, conversions, even if there isn't a lot of search volume, if they're converting well, they're going to be at least profitable. And what keywords should you put into your campaign as negative keywords? In other words, they're costing you a lot of money in clicks, but they're not making you any sales. Profit and loss. Check the third party tools like Fetcher, Hello Profit, etc. before you use any accounting packages like Zero, QuickBooks to check gross profit first. A lot easier and quicker, but sooner or later you'll need to you know, check the overall profits of the business as well. So first of all, you want to see what products have resulted in sales and what the sort of profits are, if any. And if there aren't profits yet, could you tweak things to make them profitable? Very common with a new product line. Uh, if you've air freighted something over, and you were a bit over optimistic about the sales price you could fetch, guess what? You won't be making profit yet. But that's okay as long as you can engineer things for your next consignment, your next shipment, probably by sea freight, for example, that will make a profit. And the main thing is not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Your product, product may not yet be profitable, but if it's selling, then there's a market for it. Then you need to see if you can reverse engineer your costs to get them to the place where it is profitable. So just make sure you're very clear about the numbers. And again, Amazon ads as a percentage of sales, the ATS ratio is, is something very, very important to look at. Do also look at your overheads. I often find it's just as easy to go through my bank statements and just look at the spend that I spent on software, mostly is mostly overheads or accounting services, etc. And then have my gross profit and loss via Fetcher or Hello Profit or whatever tool you use. And then combine the two into a spreadsheet. I mean, in theory, using QuickBooks or Zero should make it easy. I don't necessarily find that easy to do. So there's my hint on sort of quick and dirty accounting for entrepreneurs. So, yeah, the main thing is to, to have clear goals, which we talked about uh, recently in a podcast 297, 298. And then to look at really your progress towards those goals and try and have a big picture view of it. So don't just get obsessed with immediate profit, but think about, okay, how long am I going to want to be in this business for? Um, got to learn the skills, got to find the profitable product types, um, get the right marketing mix. So just be willing to take the long view on this stuff. But nevertheless, you need to measure, am I moving towards the goals I want? Am I moving towards um, having time freedom, if that's important? Am I moving towards profit or am I able to increase my profits? Am I learning the skill sets that I think I'm going to need in the next two, five, even 10 years? So that's the way I would try and look at these things. Um, we'll have another quick look at some other measurements that you might want to make over your business looking back over the last year or so. And then we'll, in the new year, be looking at, of course, New Year's resolutions and goal setting, because that's where the exciting bit happens as well. But don't neglect your past data when you're setting future goals, I think, because you're, you're missing a treasure trove of potential wins or indeed reducing losses, depending on where you're at. Thanks for listening. I hope you've had a lovely Christmas uh, by the time you hear this and have a nice new year if that's still to come for you and look forward to helping guide you into 2019 and making it one of your most prosperous and exciting years yet.